If you're sick and tired of your stick welding looking like this, pause what you're doing, we're gonna show you how to correct it. So we're gonna be using an 80 degree torch angle and we're gonna be sticking that rod as close as possible, keeping a nice tight arc right into the corner of that T-fillet joint. For this demonstration, we're gonna be using 7018 low hydrogen rods and we're gonna be using the multi-run technique doing free runs. So whenever I'm teaching someone to start welding, we always start off with this technique, the T-fillet and multi-running. This helps you multiple ways, blending in your runs, making them look consistent and keeping a nice tight arc. For this first run, what we're trying to achieve is penetration straight into the joint, whilst keeping it as flat and consistent as possible. This is one, if not the most important run. We've got to make sure that we penetrate into both of them plates and also fuse into both sides of the plate, keeping them consistent throughout. I've seen quite a few videos online showing you different techniques. We've slightly over exaggerated this, but moving forwards and backwards, not an ideal technique. You're leaving yourself open to welding defects throughout, even though, as you'll see in a minute, the results don't come out too bad. The only time you'd potentially use this is if you were 6010, so cellulosic rods, and we were doing a butt weld and we were trying to spread the heat to ensure that we don't blow through our material. But any other weld on a T fillet or any other type of joint, we should not be using this technique. So we're going to be moving on to our second run now, and as you can see, we're taking a nice sharp angle this is to ensure that we're fusing into that bottom plate of the t-fillet so we're covering half of the previous run ensuring that we're also putting weld material into that bottom plate so it leads us nicely onto our third run very important when stick welding that we drag. The reason this is so important is we keep the flux coating at the back of the weld pool and not the front. If we were pushing this weld, the flux coating would be at the front of the pool and we would have slag traps. So it's important to note that our amps are exactly the same as the first run. The only difference that we've actually changed here is our rod angle and that will change consistently depending on the type of joint which you are producing. Stick welding is one of the most difficult welds to master. So you've got to pay close attention to the arc Watch that arc closely while welding. It's gonna give you the feedback you need for your weld and your technique. Especially if you go onto difficult joints like 6G pipe welding, this technique will still stand. So we're moving on to the third and final fillet now. And as you can see, we've got a really sharp angle, but we're pointing that rod right into the top of the plate. If we've done the second run correctly, we should now have a nice guideline all the way down the joint to follow. This is going to allow us to just sit halfway onto the previous run and ensure that we get our third and final capping run onto this joint, making sure that we're doing the neatest and best job possible. We must also be aware as welders of our heat input into our material. It's quite simple, the more heat you put into the material, the more it's going to bend and distort. So a little trick in the trade, when you're capping or putting your final finishing runs in, let your material cool. It's a lot easier to control your weld pool when your material is cold than when it's hot. You can control the weld pool a lot better and you make a lot neater and nicer finish on your welding job. So we're going to go ahead and finish this joint. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out. And out of curiosity, if you're new to welding, what are your goals in pursuing welding? Are you looking to do it serious and become a pipe welder? Or are you just doing it as a hobby to fix things around your yard? Let us know in the comments down below. And in the meantime, if you're looking to develop your welding skills further, we're going to show you how you can do just that on the video you can see on the screen now. 